Hi everyone, Daniel Linder here. I am the creator of the Relationship Model of Addiction and I'm here to serve you and be a guiding light and source of inspiration for you as you traverse your journey of recovery from unhealthy relationships that feed addiction to healthy, emotionally nourishing relationships that feed self-growth and intimacy. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to pick up from where we left off, right now the focus is on the second stage of recovery. Just quick review. The first stage of recovery I call sustained stabilization and call, also call it the breakup or after the breakup. So the first stage is you're adjusting and coping and just being in the world without your relationship without the bad, the unhealthy relationship with your addiction. After that period of adjustment, whether it's six months or a year, you're entering the second stage of recovery, which is, I call that self-work, self-care, the relationship, developing a relationship with yourself. So self-work, what I mean by self-work is becoming, working with yourself in such a way that you're becoming a source within yourself. Within yourself there's a source of well-being and self-worth so you no longer have to, so your well-being, your emotional well-being and self-worth is no longer externally based, that is based on or dependent on how other people see you, how other people respond to you, how other people feel in your presence or how happy you make them, uh, the effect that you have on them. Uh, but rather, uh, you're, you, you know, it's internalized. Self-care, also in this second stage of recovery, is about learning to take care of yourself and operate in your own interests. And we talked about that as being uh, connected, uh, connected to what you're thinking, feeling, and wanting and putting that out there and uh, being able to compare notes. Just being able to operate in your own interests and representing those interests. What's best for you? What makes you feel better? What's most conducive for your emotional well-being and health? So you're operating in your own interests. Also, another part of this second stage of addiction, of recovery, is developing a relationship with yourself. What does that mean? And this is where the, my poem comes in and what I really wanted to continue doing today is working with my poem, that, uh, my best friend, and using that as a practice to develop more of a relationship with yourself. So I want to I want to continue doing that. Last week I was talking about respect, you know, and and self-respect and what what that's based on and where that comes from and how you develop that within yourself. And I also talked about uh, creating your own zone of safe safety so you could be yourself like uh, Elizabeth Gilbert was talking about the need for human beings to create their own space so they could be and they could express themselves freely and spontaneously without getting too close to the other person and putting yourself at risk of getting impaled on the other person's quills. So continuing along, my best friend so what I said, you know, if you go back to it, okay, I'm looking now at my best friend trusts, accepts, understands me. What does this mean? What does trusting yourself mean? So the idea is to take this poem, my best friend, and to kind of work with it, read it, try to apply it within yourself. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm doing that for you as an example of what you could do with yourself. So what is trusting what does trusting myself mean to me? Well, one thing that comes up for me is just having it assumed. It's a given that my experience, the extent to which I'm aware of my experience, whether it's what I'm thinking, feeling, wanting, needing, whatever is going on inside of me is real and valid to the extent that I'm aware of it. So 
I don't, I'm not questioning the validity of it or my, the, whether it's real or not by how another person responds. I'm connected to what I'm, I'm aware and connected to what I'm feeling and what my experience is and hold that as valid. Also, I think of it in terms of congruence. I trust that what I say is what I feel and what I feel is what I say. So there's that emotional congruence and I'm also talking about behavioral congruence is can you do I say what I do and do what I say that's really what trust is built on I trust people or I can tr trust in a relationship is built on the um, the assumption that we're each other is going to take responsibility for what they say and do that means do what you say and say what you do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do what I say and say what I do, follow through, be, act consistent, and I'm going to be expecting you to do the same. But I'm not going to be expecting you to do the same uh, if I can't do it myself, if that's not what trust means to me, if I can't enact that and uh, manifest that. What else does trust mean to me? Trust also means when I trust myself, I'm also talking about trusting when I have this sense I'm always attuned to what's going on inside of me and when I have this sense of whether I could, whether I feel safe or I f don't feel safe. This is very important because this, this is about whether trusting those warning signals, trusting that barometer, am I safe, am I not, and following from that, if I'm feeling safe, I could open up more, share more, receive more, express more, and if I'm feeling unsafe, I'm going to close down, distance myself, um, protect myself based on what, and I could do that subtly. I don't have to say I'm, I'm pulling away, I'm shutting down, I'm going away, I'm protecting myself. It's this sort of internal uh, uh, relating, interacting that you're having with yourself to where you could act in your own interests. So that's, those are kinds of things that come up for me around trusting myself. Let's see what comes up for you when you meditate on this and look at this and try to apply some of these concepts to your own experience. Why don't you see where you go with it and you can journal about it and uh, talk about it with other people who maybe also are doing that, looking at my best friend and what it means to them. The, the next part of this, I mean, I'm, I'm breaking this down so you could do it in, you know, there's a lot of pieces to the, my best friend that you could really use to uh, build up this relationship with yourself and be your own best friend. And acceptance is another, is another uh, way of having a relate, being your own best friend. Do I accept myself? Well, I don't accept myself always. I can be very critical. I have my critic like most other people do where I'm, I could be berating myself and uh, feeling bad about myself or falling short in various areas. But however, overall, my overall sense of myself is that I accept myself. I know that I'm a mixed bag. I know that I have strengths and I have vulnerabilities and I know that I sometimes hold myself to a higher standard. I have my ideal, I have beliefs and ideas about how I should be, how I want to be, um, even what I thought I was, you know, in terms of an ideal. And come, I have to come to um, acceptance of myself as just what I am. It's kind of just this mixed bag and really embrace myself and love myself and accept myself just as I am as opposed to how I want to be in the world, how I want to see myself. So those are a couple of uh, concepts in my best friend for you to work with. I'm, gonna con I'm going to continue doing this in the next week, maybe the next two weeks, going through this because I, this, my poem, my best friend, I want to be able, I want you to be able to use this so you can develop your relationship with yourself and be your own best friend. So in summary today, I'm going to continue this in subsequent weeks using my best friend poem as a tool, as a practice to develop more of a relationship with yourself. So on that note, until then, remember, the running theme here is the most important relationship is with yourself. And the quality of all of your relationships comes from and is built on the quality of your relationship with yourself.